Is the White House putting pressure on a congressman to be quiet? Well, our next guest is a congressman, and he says the answer is yes. But he's telling the White House to take a hike because he's talking to you right here, right now. Congressman Bart Stupak got the pro-life Stupak amendment into the House health care bill, and that amendment would ban taxpayer money from funding any health insurance plan that covers abortion. The Senate came up with an abortion compromise, but many of the pro-life movement says it does not go far enough. Congressman Stupak says the White House gave him a not-so-subtle message. What is that message, and how was it delivered? Congressman Stupak joins us by phone. Good evening, sir, and tell me, um, first of all, did they give you the message not to talk? Well, they asked me not to say anything until they had a chance to walk me through the amendment. And uh, wanted, apparently they had just reached an, an agreement. They wanted the vote to go through the other day. So they said, can you just quiet and don't say anything until we get done with uh, this a vote and, and walking you through the amendment? And, and I gave them a few hours and I just said, I don't need you to walk me through the amendment. I can read it. And this amendment is unacceptable. All right, and you're talking about the um, Senator Ben Nelson Senate amendment um, that correct. is, it creates a, a firewall of funds. Is that correct? It's, it's not, it doesn't go as far as the Stupac amendment does in the House. No, no. The, the Nelson amendment, besides firewall, does a number of things. It's a dra dramatic break from current policy. The Stupac amendment keeps current policy, which says no federal funding for abortion and no federal funding for insurance policies that fund or that uh, have abortion as a benefit. What the Nelson language does, besides the firewall, they number one, recognize abortion as a benefit in the federal, as a benefit underneath the federal plans. Number two, it says that at least one plan, could be nine out of 10 plans, but at least one plan must have abortion coverage. Number three, every enrollee in the exchange, in this OPM, Office of Personnel Management, they call, would have to pay $1 per month for reproductive rights, which would include abortion coverage. So the Nelson Amendment deviates many ways from current law and from the Stupac Amendment. All right. Now, uh, when the two bills come together in conference, because I assume that the bill is going to be gr is passed tomorrow in the United States Senate, so that it will go to the be reconciled with the House bill, there seem to be three options. Either the bill that comes out of the reconciliation will be the Stupac with the Stupac Amendment, or with the Senator Ben Nelson compromise, or some sort of compromise between the two. Is there any way you could vote for? Anything that would be in any way a watered-down stew pack? Do you have any margin to uh, to negotiate? Sure, I've repeatedly mentioned to the White House and leadership and Senate leadership that twice we have voted on language close to stew pack, but not quite stew pack. In the Children's Health Initiative program this year, in April of this year, when we voted to expand it to include 10 million children underneath uh, S chip program, the president signed that into law. That had restricted language on abortion. And then recently, even after the Stupac Amendment, we voted on the Labor HHS Appropriations Bill, which basically has the Stupac language in it, and again, recently signed by the President. So what I've done in my amendment, it's smeared in those two pieces of legislation that all these people who can't vote for the Stupac Amendment have voted for, and the President has even signed it in the law. So there is precedent here. There is legislation we can look at that's already been signed in law, we all voted for. Let's use that as our reference point and put that in the health care bill. Then we can move off the abortion issue and get to the health care issue. Why do you think that Senator Ben Nelson, who has been pro-life, um, didn't uh, want, I mean, I know they tried to, he tried to introduce the, he tried to ex get the language of the Stupac Amendment initially into the Senate bill, Correct. but then he agreed to this. Right. Well, well, why did he agree to this? I think he felt that he was actually making the language uh, that was in the bill, that was originally in the Reed bill, he, he thinks, and, and in a way he has, because if a state opts out, then, then they won't have to have this uh, abortion coverage. In a way, he, he's made the language better. It's, a, it's better than what was introduced in the Senate, but it's not as good as the Stupac Amendment, and it's not reflective of current law. All Stupac Amendment does, all we're saying is keep the current law. As your last guest, uh, Senator Graham, said, you're expanding the federal role in the health care. He claims 60% of them are in a government-sponsored program. He says they'll go to 80. Well, if you're expanding from 60 to 80, why not just keep the current prohibitions in place that have been in place for 33 years, no public funding for abortion, and then let's really argue about health care and, and, and have health care passed for the American people. What's your uh, looking at the crystal ball? What do you think is going to happen? 
Oh, I think we got a long ways to go. Uh, uh, members I've talked to in the last 48, 72 hours are really concerned about some of the provisions in the Senate bill, especially those with, uh, you know, some states got special deals and, and, and we feel it's unfair. Uh, we're here trying to provide a policy, which is a health care policy, not a legislation that who gets the best for their state or who gets the best deal for this insurance company in their state. That's not what health care should be all about. It's, we're talking about national health care. We should have all Americans covered and we're all in this together and it should be equitable and fair no matter where you live. The quality of your health care or how much you pay should not depend on where you live. Congressman, thank you, sir. Thank you.